was uh, that was Monday. So uh, I presume that almost all of you are in this class now for the duration. Right? From hell or high water, you're not getting out of here. Uh, certainly, and there's nothing I can do. Right? Absolutely nothing. But there is one thing I will do. Uh, I mean, I was hoping the grades would be somewhat better on this exam, but here's what I'm going to do. On the final, if your grade is 190 or above, you'll get an A, regardless of what you did in the semester. So this person or persons, there was at least one, maybe a couple that had zero on this exam, still could get an A in the course. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Yes, at 190? I don't even look right at what happened, right? You just <laughs> I, I don't, I rarely do this. I, 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 I don't do it every single semester, but uh, I, I've done it from time to time. If your grade on the final exam is 190 or more, you will get an A independent of what your grades were prior. Can I say it any more clearly than that? Uh, last semester I didn't do this, but I did check and all of those people who had 190 or more, and there were quite a few, already had great grades. Okay? So the A they got, they would have gotten it anyway. All right? So, but, but they didn't have the incentive that you had, right? Because I, I did not do that. But I did check just to see what the, what the results were. Generally, the people do do better on the final. That is to say, half of the final is it's not at all unusual for half the final to be better than the lowest test grade. Okay. So, that's, uh, that's everything I have to say. I'll return the exams uh, at the end of the period. Um, I promised you that we would have a copper. So. Well, what happened to the last one? Dude? <laughs> no, they took it away from Britain. <laughs> so get out your form. This is just on, this is, I'm gonna ask you to add two oh, yeah, major no, 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 no. C's. Uh, stuff like that should not take any time. This is copper number nine. Copper number nine. So you just have to pick which of these or none of the above. A homogeneous system of linear equations is always inconsistent, consistent, dependent, irascible, or none of the above. I don't even know what irascible means. like irritable, hard to get along with, like angry. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely hard to along with. It'd be a mistake to choose that one, but if you think it's correct, go ahead. Are you in logic? Pardon me? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Of course I'll make it. How's that?
okay? Everybody ready? Number two. That matrix is in row echelon form, reduced row echelon form, neither row or reduced row, sycophantic form, or none of the above. sycophantic form, that's probably not the correct answer. <clears throat> Does everybody know what a sycophant is? Nope. Flattery. Oh? Huh? Flattery. Yeah. When I was a kid, we called them ass kissers. <laughs> sycophants. That was a little kid who was always going up and erasing the blackboard for the teacher. <laughs> okay, everybody ready? So these are easy. The sum of those two matrices is A, B, C, D, or E. C to what? Okay. Shall I go back to them slowly so you can... Uh, if at all. see at the end of the period today about determinants, inverses, systems of equations, and so on. So we'll go back, uh, pick up where we left off. 
This is not normal. So we're talking about the terms. The definition that I gave you is the inductive definition. I tell you how to do a two by two, and then define three by three in terms of two by twos, four by four in terms of three by threes, and so on. Okay, so some properties. Let me make sure that this works. Yeah, we did this. This is Kramer's rule. Okay. So let me just quickly review. You have a system of equations. Then the value of x sub i, the i unknown, is a quotient. The denominator is the determinant of the matrix of coefficients. The numerator is the same determinant, except you remove the column of coefficients of x sub i and replace it by the numbers on the right-hand side. And I gave you a simple example of that in the 2 by 2 case. The interesting thing is, easy to see in the 2 by 2 case, you'll notice here that the denominator is the determinant AB minus BC, which is the determinant of the matrix coefficients. The numerator, instead of A and C, it has the alpha and the beta. And in the case of Y, the numerator, in, instead of the B and the D, it has the numbers on the right side, alpha and beta. And the remarkable thing is, this is true in all dimensions. 20 equations, 20 unknowns, this is true. Okay. We typically have a uh, multiple choice question uh, on Kramer's rule. Immediate conclusion is, if the determinant is not zero, the system has a unique solution. And there it is. If the determinant is zero, well, then it's either infinitely many or none. So what's true with AX equal B, A and B real numbers, is true in general about systems of equations. It's really amazing. OK, so then we get an uh, example or two. Properties. If A, a is now an n by n matrix. If it has a row or column of zeros, then its determinant is zero. And I took a simple example. The way I would, eva way I would evaluate this determinant is expanding down the second column. Because <coughs> you just have minus zero times who cares, plus zero times what difference does it make, <laughs> minus zero times whatever. It's just going to be zero. So that's a simple observation. <clears throat> if you have a diagonal matrix, then the determinant is simply the product of the elements on the main diagonal. Diagonal matrix is all the entries are zero, except the entries on the main diagonal, <coughs> which is the diagonal from the upper left to the lower right. Because, you see, if I expand down or across, doesn't make any difference. What did I do? I, uh, I went, uh, well, it doesn't make any difference. If I go across the first row, I have A1 times this 2 by 2 right here. Minus 0 plus 0. Well, that's 0. And the determinant B2, 0, 0, C3 is just B2, C3. In particular, the determinant of the identity is 1. The identity acts like the number one in more than no, more than one way. It is the number one. Its determinant is the number one. Triangular matrix. What's important about triangular matrices? When we get the row echelon form, it's a triangular matrix. That was one of the first things I pointed out 
about the strategy for solving a system of equations, you want to rearrange the system into a triangular form. This happens to be called upper triangular, but you could also have lower triangular. The determinant is simply the product of the elements on the main diagonal. Because you just go down the first column. A1 minus 0 times whatever, plus 0 times whatever, minus 0. And then when you look at the 3 by 3 corresponding to A1, I'm sorry, yeah, look at the 3 by 3 corresponding to A1, it's triangular. So you go down its first column. So the result is just A1, B2, C3, B4. All right. You got a matrix A. I'm going to form a new matrix B by interchanging two rows or two columns. What you do if you do that is change the sign of the determinant. Interchanging rows or columns changes the sign of the determinant. I'll illustrate with a with a two by two, that's enough, I, I hope. <clears throat> so suppose we have the matrix um, A, B, C, D. Then the determinant, this is A. The determinant of A is A, D minus B, C. Now B, I'm going to form B by interchanging rows one and two. That's the only rows I have. So that would be C, D, A, B. And the determinant of B is C, B minus uh, A, D, which is minus the determinant of A. Interchange two rows, change the sign. Or two columns. Same, exactly the same calculation. It would show that it's true for columns. Okay, so that's a problem. I'm, I'm going to do an example which uh, shows you the value of, of these pro knowing these properties. Uh, a conclusion is this: if A has two identical rows, it's got a matrix. It's got two identical rows. Its determinant is zero. So let me illustrate that. So suppose A is A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, A1, A2, A3. So A has two identical rows. Why is the determinant of A equal to zero? Well, let's let B equal. Now I'm going to interchange rows one and three. Okay, I'm going to interchange rows one and three. What happens when I do that? I get A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, A1, A2, A3, which is just A, right? What can I say about the determinant of B? Because I interchange two rows, the determinant of B is minus the determinant of A. But B is A. So this is the determinant of A. So this says 2 determinant A is 0. Right? Just carry this determinant over to the right. Which says determinant A is 0. Two identical rows. Determinant 0. You see, I can now on, pop, on the popper on Monday give you a 5 by 5. With two identical, and I, I make it so it has two identical rows, and I ask for its determinant. And you have two ways to do that. You can calculate it, which will take you the whole period, <laughs> or you can use this problem. Even more is true if you have one row is a multiple of another row, the determinant is zero, because we have a property like that coming up. Multiply a row or a column by a non-zero number, say K, to obtain the matrix B. 
then the determinant of B is K times the determinant of A, which means you can pull out constant factors from a row or column. So I'll illustrate with a two by two. We'll take A equal to A, B, C, D. I'll take B uh, to be K, A, K, B, C, D. Right? I'll just multiply the first row by K. What is the determinant of B? It is K, A, D minus K, B, C, which is K times A, B minus B, C, which is K times the determinant of A. So, that's a valuable problem. You can pull out constant factors. Okay, multiply a row or a column of A by a number K, Add it to another row. Take a row, multiply by a number, add that to another row. Or if you want it, columns. To obtain the matrix B. Same determinant. You don't change the value of the determinant. Okay, so let the, before I show you that quickly, let's just review here. Uh, interchanging two rows. That was an elementary row operation. What I'm showing you is the elementary operations in the context of determinants. If you're looking at a system of equations, you interchange two rows, nothing changes. But in a determinant, it changes the sign. This property here was the one, the elementary operation, multiplying a row, take, taking a system of equations, multiplying an equation by a number k, does not change the solution set, right? But it does change the determinant, okay? By the number k, by the factor k. But this is the second elementary operation, and this is the third elementary operation. And the point is, with these properties, you could perform the elementary operations on a determinant. And I'll show you an example of doing that. Multiply a row or column by number k, add it to another row or column, contain b. Determinant b is determinant a. You don't change the determinant. This is the only one which is unchanged, right? Which mimics exactly the corresponding row operation. So let's see. I'm going to take, a, again, a, I'll just do it for a two by two, a, b, c, d. Okay? And uh, I'm b. I'm going to multiply row A by K and add it to row B. So B is going to be A, B. It's going to be C plus K, A. And then it's going to be a D plus K, D. Right? I multiply row 1 by K and add it into row 2. So what is the determinant of B? It is A times B plus KB. A times that minus B times C plus KA, which is AD plus KAB minus BC minus KAB which is A, B minus B, C. It's true in general. I've illustrated it for a two by two. Okay. Uh, so you have the analogs of the elementary row operations for determinants. Here is a, a useful property. A and B are n by n matrices then the determinant of AB is determinant A times determinant B. Now that's, I'm not going to, oh, I could illustrate it for you. Uh, it's true. It's hard to prove in general because the notation is tough. The determinant of a product is the product of the determinant. Okay. 
So let's take a four by four. And I'm going to evaluate. You know, a four by four, I, well, if, I were, if, I were, if I were going to evaluate it, I'm going to go down this column because of that zero. Okay? But still, a four by four means evaluating four three by threes. Well, in this case, three three by threes because of the zero. But I have these properties. Why don't I do this? Why don't I multiply row one by three, add it to row three, that'll be my new row three, row one by minus three, add it to row four, that'll be my new row four. This doesn't change the determinant, the value of the determinant. And I'm going to have a much simpler determinant because it's going to have a column, three of whose entries are zeros. By the way, I could pull out that two also. Right? But let me, let, me, let me do this operation first, and what do we get? Three, three, one, five. Uh, two, two, zero, two. I multiplied by three, so this is nine plus four is 13. Nine plus one is 10. Zero, because that's why I did it. And 15 plus two is 17. Now I'm multiply by minus three. Minus nine plus two is minus seven. Minus nine plus 10 is one, a zero. And then a minus 15 plus two, minus 13. Oh, negative two. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. I can't even copy down correctly. Thank you. Minus two. Okay. So what is this determinant equal to? This is one times the three by three, two, two, minus two, 13. Uh, let me write a little bigger. I don't know how I got so tiny here. All right. What is the three by three corresponding to this one? By the way, it's a plus one, right? Mm -hmm. Plus one, plus, minus, plus. And then two, two, minus two, 13, 10, 17, minus seven, one, minus 13. This is equal to two times one, 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 minus one, 13, 10, 17, minus seven, one, minus 13. Now what am I gonna do? I guess I'll multiply row one by minus 13, just because I feel like it, I'm gonna zero out these things here. This is the, I'm just doing row operations. <clears throat> plus row two, that's my new row two. I'm gonna multiply row one by seven, add it to row three, that's my new row three. I get two times one, one, minus one, zero, minus 13 plus 10, I think that's a minus three. 13, whoo. Uh, Happened here. Minus 13, I hate this. Minus 13 times minus 1 is 13 plus 17 is 30. And then a 0 and a, uh, let's say multiply by 7, that's an 8. And then a minus 7 and a minus 13 is a minus 20. Now I'm essentially done, right? So what is this determinant? It's two <coughs> times 60 <laughs> minus, so how much is that? Like 240, right? Which is uh, whatever that is. I think I made an error, uh, not arithmetical error uh, because I actually worked this out beforehand. 
And oh, I see. I did make an error. I did. I made an error. Uh, the error. You know when I wrote down <coughs> when I wrote down the two there, and I was corrected. Well, I did the same thing again. Oh. And when I worked it out. Well, okay, so this this appears to be correct. What's 60 from 240? That's like 180. 180? So this is minus 360. And I think that's right. I believe that's right. Yeah. On the first step, when we utilize the R1 and R3 to make R3, yeah. you have said that R3 is R3 plus R4. I didn't do uh, I didn't do R three plus R four. Could you have done that? Sure, 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 sure. And then R four. Yeah, 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 yeah. You could have done that. Yeah, absolutely. When you're doing row operations, you can use your own judgment. Okay, you don't have to do them exactly the way I did by any means. You're exactly right. If you say row three and row four, you get a zero, right? You know, that's a lot easier than what I did, actually. I still have to get one more zero. But. Okay, so there's an example, and, and, and I'm, I'm confident this is correct, because I've done this before and gotten minus 360. So, uh, all right. Okay. <laughs> you see? You see? There it is, minus 360. Okay. <laughs> Here's something very important. We now, with what we know, there are a number of things which are equivalent. They mean, they mean exactly the same thing. The system of equations has a unique solution. It's the same thing as saying that the reduced row echelon form is the identity. <clears throat> is the same thing as saying the rank of A is N. Remember, the rank of a matrix is the number of non-zero rows in the row echelon form or reduced row echelon form. It's the number of non-zero rows when you row reduce. A has an inverse. <coughs> the determinant of A is not zero. These all say the same thing. They're all equivalent. If I tell you that I have an n by n system and it's consistent, well, that doesn't tell me everything, right? Because it can be, it can have infinitely many solutions. Consistent just means it has solutions. Could be unique, could be infinitely many. But if I tell you I have a system of equations that has a unique solution, you immediately know the determinant is not zero, the matrix has an inverse. Uh, the row echelon, reduced row echelon form is the identity, and the rank is n, the, the size of the system. These are all saying the same thing. So you, we make up true-false questions. You know, simple ones. System of equations has a, has a system of equations, and the <coughs> solution set is not unique. Then you know the determinant is zero. You know that it doesn't have an inverse. You know that the reduced row echelon form is not the identity. These things work both ways, you know, forward and backward. Okay. Determinant not zero, that's very important, determinant not zero. Just, you know, you go back to AX equal B, you know, you have a unique solution if A is not zero. What takes the place of that with a system of equations is the determinant. The determinant determines unique solution versus not. Okay, another term, standard term in linear algebra. A is non-singular if its determinant is not zero. It's singular if the determinant is zero. Non-singular, determinant not zero. 
Singular determinant equals zero. Okay, forging ahead for the next topic. Forging ahead, we're going to talk about probably the most important concept in linear algebra. We've touched on it in differential equations. We've got a homogeneous linear <coughs> differential equation. What we said is we wanted two independent solutions, meaning that they were not multiples of each other, second order, not multiples of each other. We phrase that in terms of Vronsky, which is a determinant, not zero. Okay. So now we want to look at the idea of linear independence, dependence in Rn. You know, makes it all of our examples are going to be R2, R3, maybe R4, not much bigger. Rn is the set of all ordered n tuples. It's n-dimensional space. In fact, there's a name for it. It's called Euclidean. <coughs> m space. This is Euclidean. If you just said free space, everybody knows what you mean. But in fact, it's called Euclidean space. The reason it's called Euclidean is because the way you calculate distance is the square root of the sum of the squares. And that's called Euclidean distance. There's other ways to measure distance. Okay. So we want to talk about independence and dependence in R2 and R3 and R4 and in general. But examples coming from R2 and R3. What does linearly dependent mean? And I, I think we've seen this uh, definition before in differential equations, but in any event, you've got a set of vectors, okay, each of which has n components, but just some set of vectors. The set is linearly dependent. You've got k vectors. The set is dependent if you can find k numbers, not all zero, so that this linear combination is the zero vector. That's what it means to be linearly dependent. It's linearly independent if it's not linearly dependent. That's well, not the greatest uh, definition for independence. So you can phrase it in a similar way. The set is linearly independent if the only way C1, V1 plus C2, V2 plus CK, VK equals zero is to have all the coefficients equal to zero. We have seen something like this before. The only way that C1, X squared plus C2 X cubed is identically zero, that is zero for all X. We were worried about independence of X squared and X cubed back in differential equations. Because I can write down for you a homogeneous equation which has X squared and X cubed as solutions. And we want it to be independent. The only way this can be zero for all x is to have c1 equal to c2 equal to zero. We've seen that before. Okay. So, so let's look at two vectors. Just two vectors in, in, in any space. In particular, I picked two, which were, uh, well, they're linearly dependent if and only if one is a multiple of the other. So wherever you are, if you've got two vectors, the only way they can be dependent is to have one be a multiple of the other. 
So let me, let me, let me just show you why that's true. Suppose V1, V2, V pending. Then there are two numbers, C1, C2, not both zero, such that C1, V1 plus C2, V2 is zero. Well, suppose the C1 and the C2 are not both zero. Suppose C1 is not zero. <coughs> then V1 is minus C2 over C1 times V2. It's a multiple of V2. And you could make the same conclusion if C2 were the one which is not zero. V2 would be a multiple of V1. So we look at these two here, and by the way, when you just have two vectors with only a few components, it's easy to spot whether they're dependent or not. If I multiply this one by what? Minus two, right? Minus two times a, minus a half is a one. Uh, <clears throat> minus two times one is minus two. Minus two times minus two is four. So it's easy to see that V1 is just minus two times V2. Two vectors, one to be dependent, one has to be a multiple of the other. If you have two vectors and they're not multiples of each other, then they're independent. Got two functions, not multiples of each other, they're independent. Okay? Now what about these two? These are dependent. Because V2 is clearly 0 times V1. Any set of vectors which contains the zero vector is dependent. Now, how about these two? Well, can't you see that V2 is not a multiple of V1? If V2 were a multiple, <coughs> or, or let's say if, if V1 were a multiple, <coughs> excuse me, of V2, then that multiple would have to be minus 2. Because minus 2 times that 1 gives me this minus 2. But minus 2 times 9 is sure not 0. So when you have two vectors, it's easy to spot whether they are multiples of each other or not. OK. Well, suppose you have three vectors. What about v1 and v2? Well, they're not multiples of each other. So v1 and v2 are independent, right? They're independent. They're not multiple of each other. V1 not a multiple of V2 or vice versa. How about the three of them? Well, now let me just tell you what the situation is. The maximum number of vectors in R2, R2, you know, is two-dimensional. Challenge too hard. R2 is two dimensional. You agree with that? There's only two independent directions in R2. Mm -hmm. The fundamental the directions you like are 1, 0, and 0, 1. Okay? So the maximum number of independent vectors is two. It's two dimensional, so you can't have three independent directions. You see, you do understand a vector is a direction. That's not completely true. A vector has two properties, direction and magnitude. For independence and dependence, only we're concerned, only concerned about direction. So in the plane, there's a maximum of two independent directions, three vectors, have to be dependent. They have to be dependent. These three have to be dependent. So suppose you don't know that. So the question is, does there exist three numbers, not all zero, so that C1, V1, C2, V2, C3, V3 is zero, zero? 
So uh, I said, that is, does this system of equations have non-trivial solutions? Right? How did I get from here to here? Well, we want C1 times 1 minus 1 plus C to T. It's OK if I write it as columns rather than rows. Right? It's, it's just a little easier to see how we go from here to here. What was, uh, what was C2? What was V2? 2 minus 3 and C3. We, we're trying to find three numbers not all 0. C1, C2, C3. That's a 2. 3 minus 5. Equal to 0, 0. Well, look. This, look at the first components. C1 plus 2C2 plus C3, C3 has to be 0. Minus C1, minus 3C2, minus 5C3 has to be 0. So my three vectors lead to two equations, because right, I only have two dimensions, in the three unknowns. Does that have non-trivial solutions? Here's a fact which I've mentioned in section 5.4. A homogeneous system always has solutions. Zero, 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 zero is a solution. Automatically, always has solutions. The question is, does it have more than just zero, zero, zero? And the answer is, <laughs> if you have more unknowns than equations, you will always have infinitely many solutions. All right, we go back to, uh, let me write, I can write down underneath here. Look at this system. I'll write down the augmented matrix. One, two, three, I think it's one, two, three, zero. Yeah. Minus one, minus three, minus five, zero. I row reduce. One, two, three, zero, zero, minus one, minus two, zero which is 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0. And you see x3 is arbitrary. x1 and x2 are determined. Infinitely many solutions. This is always true. Why? Because when you write down your system of equations and just look at this and row reduce, you hit the bottom before you go off the right side. Right? Because I, I have more unknowns than equations, I'm going to hit the bottom first. So that's why you have infinitely many. You have more columns, right, which don't get reduced. Very important fact. Homogeneous system with more unknowns than equations always has infinitely many non-trivial solutions. Okay, so there's four vectors in three specs, dependent or independent. B1, B2, B3, B3. Dependent or independent? Dependent, right? Automatically. Four vectors, three specs. This said something I didn't understand. Dependent. <laughs> what the hell is that? Somebody watching television? No. Right? Four vectors, three spades. A maximum number of independent, maximum number of directions in three spades is three. How about V1, V2, V3? Are they dependent or independent? How about V1 and V2? Can you tell me that? Independent, right? How do you spell that? V1 and V2 are not multiples of each other, so they're independent. So you see, kind of interesting. Think about it. This is the interesting case, right? I, I, I don't have any idea. Well, I, I honestly, at this second, don't have any idea 
whether they're independent or dependent. They could be either. Right? When you have more vectors than the dimension, dependent automatically. When you have exactly the same number of vectors, well, then that's a question. And that's going to be your problem. How are you going to figure out, in, in this case, for example, whether they're independent or dependent? In the case of B1 and B2, I can tell just by looking. Okay, so look at the B1, B2, B3. Does this system here have non-trivial solutions? How are you going to find that out? Right? How are you going to determine whether that system has non-trivial solutions? <laughs> Write down the old Bennett matrix, roll reduce. It's active. Because of the zeros, they never change. You can just roll with them. They should not direct down the zeros. I'll look at this in a second. So, some of you, I think, understand that all I have to do is row reduce that matrix. Right? If I get a row, a row of zeros, infinitely many. If I get one, 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 then there's only one solution, and that's the trivial one. Okay. Or why not calculate the determinant? Right? Determinant, not zero, unique solution, meaning zero, zero, zero is the only solution. It doesn't have non-trivial solutions. Determinant equal to zero, well, in general, I don't know. But with a homogeneous system, no solution is not an option. So it has to be infinitely many. The nice thing about these equivalences is it's logical, right? So you have to think logically. And it's good to have command of the equivalences. Because I think. Yeah, it's probably six of one, half a dozen of the other. Which do you think is easy? Row reducing this matrix or calculating that determinant. Well, you just have to decide which do you like to do better, which can you do faster. If I calculate the determinant, what I'm going to do is go across the last row. I could go down the second column. Why am I going to go across the last row rather than down the second column? Because of the minus signs there. <coughs> you gotta remember that, you know, I have to, this is a minus two times. So I go across the last row. Two times. So this is minus four, uh, minus three is minus seven, plus two times, minus three plus two is minus one, minus 14 minus, this is minus 16, not zero, right? Vectors are independent. If we row reduce, you know, I got it set up so it's not too bad. Uh, row one plus row two is row two. Row minus two, row one plus row three is my new row three. 1, 2, minus 1, 0, minus 1, minus 3, 0, minus 4, and uh, what is this? A 2 and a 2 is a 4. So this becomes 1, 2, minus 1, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, minus 1, minus 3. This becomes 1, 2, minus 1, 0, 1, minus 1. 0, 0, minus 4, which would make that a 1. So uh, the system has a unique solution. Right? That form tells me unique solution. The rank is 3. So unique solution. Well, that went pretty quick. OK. So. All right, we did that. We just did that. Here's a, okay, so.
so now we get, you know, the kind of questions you'll be asked. Because uh, what I just did is, for, for you people who understand what's going on, it's, it's easy to do that. So you make it a little tough. This is what separates the men from the boys, right? And the women from the girls. Okay, now I got four vectors here, B1, B2, B2, and they contain a parameter. For what values of A are those vectors linearly dependent? Presumably I could put in some, replace A by certain numbers and have dependence, other numbers and have independence, right? Some A's will give you independence, some A's will give you dependence. What values of A are these linearly dependent? Answer. All that. For what values of A are the vectors linearly dependent? All values of A. Why? <laughs> Four vectors in three space. <clears throat> this, by the way, often appears as a multiple choice question on exam three. And you miss it. Well, if you miss it, you're probably going to miss a bunch of others, so it doesn't make much difference. But if you're really on top of this stuff and you miss it, then, then you're going to feel very bad. Okay? All values of that. You got four that. You got four 3D vectors. They gotta be dependent. They can't be independent. All right. For what values of A are B1, B2, B3? Dependent. Well, we want this system to have non-trivial solutions. That's what we want. So, you want to row reduce that thing? Or, yeah, you know, there's the system. Write down the old embedded matrix. Row reduce. We've done problems like that. In fact, I think on the current EMCF, there are problems like this. Give you a matrix with a parameter, and you're supposed to find out the values of the parameter, which give you a unique solution, infinitely many, or none. All right? So that's the reason for doing those problems back in section 5.3. Row no reduce. Or why not calculate the determinant? Determinant zero means infinitely many solutions. So we'll calculate the determinant. I'm going to, don't make much difference here, I'm going to go across the first row. <clears throat> so this is 4a minus 3a is a minus 1 times minus 2 plus 6, I think is a 4, minus 1 times uh, minus a plus 4a, let me get it right now, minus a plus 4a, I think is 3a. So this is a squared minus 3a minus 4. What was the question? For what values of a are these dependent? The determinant, if, if the determinant is 0, the vectors are dependent. So this is a minus 4 times a plus 1. So we get a equal to 4, a equal to minus 1. Or you could have row reduced. I think calculating the determinant is easier than row reduced because it's a pain. You know, step one is to interchange rows 1 and 2. Then do the row operations. You got to carry along that parameter. It's easier to it's easier to do the determinant. Okay, there's four vectors in four space. So this is a real question, right? When you have more vectors than the dimension, there's no question they're dependent. When you have fewer vectors, well, they could be either independent or dependent, and you're just going to have to roll with it. 
But when you have exactly the same number, that's a legitimate question. If you have fewer vectors than the dimension, you suspect that they're going to be independent because you've got to write them down carefully to make them dependent. What does dependent mean? It means one of the vectors depends on the others. That's what dependent means. <coughs> so if I had three vectors in four space, if they were if they were written down at random, they're independent. But I could make up an example where they're dependent. Just make one of the vectors a combination of the other two. Okay. So independent or dependent, what's the maximum number of independent vectors? Well, I can see that V1 and V2 are independent. I can see that V1 and V3 are independent. In fact, they're pairwise independent all the way through. Pick any pair, they're independent. OK, but let's look at all four. Are they independent or dependent? Well, you know, you want to calculate that determinant? Or would you rather row reduce? I'll row reduce. That four by fours, I prefer not to. Except I'm going to use row operations to make the determinant simpler. Well, then why not just use row operations from the start and do the thing? So what do we get? One minus one. Oh, I got to watch my time. Excuse me, one second here. Let me quick. Do I want to quickly do this? I do. And then we'll hand back to the thing. I think I'll just take this. Out. One minus one, two, one. Uh, we're going to do minus three, right? Three plus two is five. Whoa. Yeah, three plus two is five. Minus six. And then minus three minus one is minus four. I just add Ooh, minus five. That's nice. Oh, uh, this comes out, boom. Well, that's beautiful. And, uh, oh, how about that? <laughs> what do I conclude? They're dependent. Right? So I'm going to, going to get a row of zero. So they're dependent. Let's see how many rows we get. They have uh, about minus two. So this is a zero. This is two and go. <laughs> two and three is five. Uh, uh, whatever, I multiplied by minus two, this is a minus six, and minus two, uh, and this is a minus four. Are we with me so far? One minus one, two, one, zero, five, minus six, four, zero, 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 zero. zero. Conclusion, not only are they dependent, they're rather highly dependent. There's four vectors, but there's only two of them which make any difference. The other two are combinations of the first two. Those zeros means vector three is a combination of vectors one and two. And vector four is a combination of one and two. So the answer here is dependent or independent. They're, they're quite dependent. And what's the maximum number of independent vectors? Two. If I write down four vectors, just write them down at random, are they going to be independent or dependent? Answer, independent. Why? Because in order for them to be dependent, the determinant has to be zero. So I write down four vectors at random. It's like me throwing a dart at the real line. Right? The determinant is a number. It's a random number. So I'm throwing a dart at the real line. What's the chance that that dart hits zero? Zero. Right? It ain't going to happen. Right? You have a much better chance of winning the lottery 
than having that determine the zero. Much better. In fact, relatively speaking, you're going to win the lottery <laughs> versus the determinant being zero. So clear off the first row.